guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. On today's episode, as you guys can see by the title, it'll be all about growing up Latina and what it was like to grow up in a Salvadorian household. I saw my girl Adrian Bailon do this video and I got inspired. It's so interesting to see, like, even though she's Latina and she comes from like Puerto Rican family, it's interesting to see how she grew up, her culture, and I thought I'd share a little bit about mine and my Salvadorian culture and what it was like growing up Latina. For the first part of this video, I'm gonna just answer some questions that I get asked a lot or just general questions that I feel like you guys would want to know. So the first question is what makes you Latina? What makes me Latina is my heritage. My, both of my parents are from El Salvador. My mom is from Usulutan. My dad is my dad's originally from a smaller part. I, keep, I always forget the name. The majority of his family lives right now in San Salvador. So that is where my family is from. That's what makes me Latina. Do I speak Spanish? I get asked that a lot. Spanish was actually my first language. Um, and then I learned English in school and through my brother and my sister. I still can't pronounce certain things in English. And the older I've gotten, then I can't pronounce certain things in Spanish. So maybe I just don't know how to speak in general. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, I speak Spanish. English and I'm really trying to teach my daughter Spanish because I want her to be bilingual. How strict are Salvadorian parents? Salvadorian parents are very strict. My dad was super, super strict. I was scared of my dad like my entire life. He was super strict, wouldn't let me go anywhere. I was never allowed to sleep over anybody's house. Doesn't matter how, how much I begged. If they had a brother, if they had a dad, everybody usually has a dad. Um, I was not allowed to sleep over their house. And then I was really, really good up until 15 because I wanted a quinceañera. A lot of people ask me, did I have a quinceañera? I used to dream about my quinceañera since the, since I was five years old. My sister's 10 years older than me, so when she was 15, she had her quinceañera, and after she had her quinceañera, literally for the next 10 years, I planned mine. I was so involved. I designed my own my own quinceañera dress. I did the choreography for my um, balls and for my baile, baile de sorpresa, and I did punta merengue, and I did a little bit of hip hop. I think I did 50 Cent, I'll take you to the candy shop. That was the song that I did. Yeah, I had a really big quinceañera. It was one of the best days of my life. My dad literally probably spent all his money on my quinceañera, found money from I don't know where to throw me my quinceañera. I had the most beautiful party. I was very, very good up until 15, and then I got my quinceañera, and then I got into high school, and I had a little bit of like a bad phase where I was just like skipping school. My dad was like, I'm gonna send you to, I got in a few fights. My dad sent me to Nashville. That's where my sister lives in Nashville. I went to high school there for a year. I came back and then I was a totally different, I was a saint again. How are Salvadorian celebrations? Salvadorian celebrations are so much fun. We always have pupusas, horchatas. We have pupusas for every holiday, for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for birthdays. Our dessert, we have flan, tres leches cake. That's the only cake, first of all, I thought ever existed for a long time. Like I never tasted like vanilla cake or like chocolate cake. It was always tres leches cake. That is my favorite cake. We also used to have a lot of choco banana, which is like a frozen banana dipped in chocolate. My mom used to make a lot of agua de melon. So that's one of my favorite things to drink. My mom was also really strict with eating food. Anytime she would make us something, I would have to sit there and eat everything. I couldn't drink before I ate all of my food. And then sometimes when I was full, I would like spit my food back in like a napkin and then I would go to the bathroom a million times and flush it down the toilet. What is my favorite Salvadorian dish? All of it is my favorite Salvadorian dish. I love platanos in the morning with frijoles. I love pupusas. My favorite Salvadorian drink is an horchata, horchata de morro. I like a lot of jocotes, frozen jocotes. Also, for those that didn't know, Salvador is um, in Central America and it is the smallest country of Latin America. We are the smallest, but we are here loud and proud. And that is one of the reasons why I'm always like trying to put Salvadorians on the map. I'm wearing this, this sweater that somebody sent me. The company, I think is La Pupusa. I'll add their, their business name, but they're, they are a Salvadorian restaurant in downtown LA where they have fire pupusas. They actually sent me like all the Salvadorian clothes that I'd wear it today and rep it. So did I have Latina friends growing up? Yes, I had a lot of Latina friends growing up. My neighborhood where I lived, um, it was majority 
Latinas in there. My neighbors were also Salvadorian. Both of my neighbors were actually Salvadorian and we were all just like a big family. We literally would pretend to be cousins because that's just how like the culture, like Spanish culture is as well. That's like one thing, like you come across another Latina and you just instantly feel like you're bonded and you click and you guys just like get each other. You want to help each other out. I think that's like one thing that I really love about our culture where we are really into family. My parents both came here, both came to the United States like I want to say like 40 years ago I'm actually not too sure my mom came my mom was here first my mom and my dad both met here and um, in Los Angeles um, my brother and my sister were born in El Salvador I'm the only one that was born in the United States so my mom came first and then she brought my brother and my sister she brought my brother first a year later so she was here by herself without her kids worked and then got my brother over here and then I think a couple of months later she got my sister over here my brother was like three I think my sister was like one Can't even imagine like leaving my baby in you know another country and then moving and then a year later bringing them but you know it was all the sacrifices that she was making for us to have a better life I really admire that of my mom and then she met my dad like 10 years later and then my dad moved her my brother and my sister down to like Hollywood where I was born and raised I was born and raised like on like Santa Monica and Gower I grew up in the same apartment for literally like 20 years and we did not move and it was like eight of us living in a two-bedroom apartment a lot of people that's another thing El Salvadorians love to just like live together the whole entire family and that's kind of how like my house is now I have my mom living with me my brother has his daughter his youngest daughter Bonita living with me as well a lot of people always ask me if that's my second daughter um, she's like my second daughter but um, she is my niece and she's over our house Monday through Friday and to me it's so normal because that's just how I grew up so now let's move on to the second part of this and that is me teaching you guys some Salvadorian slang. So Salvadorian slang, like popular stuff that I would hear my mom always say, my dad always say. One of the words is cipota o cipote. Donde está la cipota vos? Which means like little girl or little boy. Another like slang is like how, ha, que chivo, which means like, it means like how cool, like que chivo están esos zapatos. And it's like, how cool are those shoes? Puchica, my mom used to say that all the time. Puchica no vos, which is a censored way of saying like, damn or like shit or chuco means dirty que chuco esos zapatos vos how dirty are those shoes bayunco bayunca is a popular popular word in salvadorian slang and it means someone who acts silly vergon means cool dope yo soy muy vergona chucho 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 means dog means perro hey okay you go back <laughs> go back follow Next word is estar a verga. Estar a verga means to be really drunk. So, me voy a poner a verga ahora. Means I want to be drunk tonight. Okay? Estar a verga. Very important slang. That's like some Salvadorian slang. If you know any more Salvadorian slang, write it down. Let me know. What are Salvadorian moms like? So, I already talked about like what are Salvadorian parents like. Salvadorian moms are, they're a bit dramatic. Hispanic moms have a remedy for everything. Your head hurts. Hurts. You're gonna put Vicks Vapuru on your forehead. I don't know why my mom was my mom never let me really be barefoot. She'd be like, every time I would be barefoot, she'd be like, Te vas a enfermar. So I would always like wear socks. And I just have that mentality now where even with Ayla, like she always has to have socks on because I just feel like she's gonna get sick if she doesn't have socks on. Tienda descalza. If you're sick, si tienes un refriado, algo, you're gonna put Vicks on the bottom of your feet. You're gonna lather yourself in Vicks and then in the morning, you're gonna be okay according to my mom <laughs> okay if you have a burn you're gonna put some butter on it Salvadorian moms also be like anytime they get on the phone with their when they're talking to people in El Salvador they'll be like mija ven para acá saluda a tu tía and you'll be like I don't I don't know who she is mom I don't want to say hi saluda a tu tía <laughs> and you have to get on the phone you have to be like hi tía I don't even know that tía I got a million tías in El Salvador they be doing that they also have a story for everything like if if they tell you like to get up in the morning she'll be like it'll be followed by a story like Puchica, todavía estás dormida, vos? and I'll be like yeah I'm tired or whatever and then she'll be like I know mamita yo en El Salvador me levantaba a las seis de la mañana y, y me iba a los campos a agarrar los frijoles and, and be like mom that was in El Salvador I'm not about to go to the forest and get some beans right now <laughs> 
My dad also has a lot of stories where if he sees that I buy like expensive shoes, he'll be like, no, mamita, mira, yo en El Salvador no tenía zapatos hasta que tenía 12 años, andaba descalzo. It's just a million stories all the time. I feel like that's just how Salvadorian parents are, but I will say that it does keep me very humble, you know, to see how they were raised. My mom says that they would only eat like rice, beans. We still only eat rice and beans in my house, rice, beans, and tortillas. But she said that like when they were, when she would be hungry, they would just make the tortilla and then they would put either like salt and just have it like that or they would just put lemon and just have it like that and then one day I walked into her I walked in she had tortillas and she had a bowl of milk and she would like dip the tortillas in there and she was just eating it I thought it was like the weirdest thing and she said that they would do that a lot like in El Salvador that that's what they would eat um, both of my parents grew up like really poor and yeah so the, those are the type of foods that they grew up on and I we actually love those foods. I could eat beans every day. Ayla loves frijoles. Like that little girl can eat frijoles, tortillas, and cheese all day long. As I grew up and you know now as, a, as I have a daughter, I definitely keep you know how they grew up really close um, and try to teach it to my daughter. The last time I, w I was back in El Salvador, I was 17 years old and I haven't gone back since. You know, El Salvador got really dangerous. The gang violence was like really, really up there. You know, the new president is doing amazing stuff for the country, so I'm a really big fan of his. I'm hoping to take my daughter when all this pandemic is over. I was actually planning a, a visit to El Salvador this year and I'm really excited about. I've also partnered up with a company called Glasswing where they have a foundation for girls. It's like a girls club, provide like employment, trainings, like a support system for Salvadorian women. So I am involved in that and I definitely am planning um, to go out there and do some work with them. Overall, growing up in a Salvadorian household was very fun. A lot of food. Salvadorian moms always want you to eat. They will like try to stuff anything down your mouth. Any If you have guests that come over, they're gonna eat. They're gonna make them something. Frijoles, tortillas, something. Thing. But growing up in a Salvadorian household was, we always had music playing, cooked to cumbias. Most Latinas and most Salvadorian girls from very young age, they're cooking, they're cleaning, they're doing all that. I had an older sister that was doing all of that and I am my dad's only child, so I am like his princess and I was not doing none of that. So I actually wasn't cooking and cleaning, but my sister was. Yeah, I, I, I learned how to cook later on in life. I'm still learning how to cook. <laughs> Yo lo hago, solo dime a dónde. Donde quieras tú, ponelo. When I blame my dad for that, but I was my dad's only child and you know, an only child, how that goes, I was very, very spoiled by him. And yeah, Ayla is not gonna be raised like that. Ayla is gonna be cooking and cleaning from now. She helps me like make certain stuff. Also, I didn't really know like any like healthy foods like really growing up because my mom just like Salvadorian food is really like fattening. It's like not the healthiest for you. And that's all I grew up on was like food like that. I never really had like a salad or like any anything like that till I was like older. And I was like, salad, ew, it's so disgusting. Now I'm like into salads and all that. But yeah, growing up I was eating the worst stuff and I was my smallest. Don't have kids, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so that is a little bit about, you know, how I grew up in a Salvadorian household. I would love to know how you guys grew up. If you guys are Latinas, comment below. Let me know if you guys, if your mom did similar things. That is a little bit about growing up in a Salvadorian household. I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys wanna see more Salvadorian videos, let me know what kind of videos you would like to see, and I will see you guys next time.